613, the one to watch for weather. This is Surviving the Storm. I'm Fox 13 Chief Meteorologist Paul Delegato, and this is Surviving the Storm. We'll take a look at the upcoming hurricane season, how to prepare your home, your family, and what's different this year. Our Fox 13 weather team talked to experts at the National Hurricane Center and NOAA to make sure you're ready for this upcoming season. And after last year, you need to be ready. The 2020 hurricane season was one of the most active on record. Add in a worldwide pandemic in the mix, and it was a wild year. Of the 30 named storms, 14 became hurricanes, six of those major hurricanes. Hurricane Hannah came first, hitting Texas last July as a Category 1. Shortly after, Isaias skirted along the Florida's east coast, making landfalls at Cat 1 in North Carolina and eventually heading up to Canada. It was late August when 2020's most expensive storm slammed ashore. Hurricane Laura roared into Louisiana and Texas as a powerful Cat 4. It looks like a tornado has come through uh, or a bomb has gone off. We couldn't even recognize many of the landmarks that we, I didn't even know this was our street. Laura brought a 10 foot storm surge and damaging winds. All the windows in the living room are blown out. Laura caused more than $19 billion in damage and 77 deaths. The name, now retired, never to be used again. Hurricanes Marco, Nana, Paulette, and Sally kept us busy as category ones and twos midway through the season. Hurricane Teddy, reached a Cat 4, but stayed out in the open Atlantic. It would be October when all the traditional names were all used up that the Greek alphabet came into play with another Category 4, Hurricane Delta. It hit Cancun and Cozumel before downgrading to a Cat 2 and then hitting Louisiana, still reeling from Laura a month earlier. This street here was like a, a river, a lot of rain, uh, a, lot of, a lot of debris that was floating around from... Uh, Remnants of Laura. A few more weeks and Hurricane Ada, a Cat 4, left devastation in parts of Central America before weakening, then meandering over Cuba, the Florida Keys, and eventually along our Gulf Coast. Ada's waves crashed into Tampa Bay's Bayshore Boulevard. Downtown Gulfport was underwater, and storm surge actually raised the tabletops at this John's Pass restaurant. It happened so fast. Claire Schmidt and her two dogs had to be rescued through the window of a Reddington Beach home. Every single room had water damage. It just kept rising and rising, and I kept putting pots on underneath the furniture and then more pots on top of that until I ran out of pots. In flood-prone shore acres, cars in flooded streets were left undrivable. Some homes had up to a foot of water. The water, I think, came to about like here. Shop owners in Paso Grill had some cleaning up to do, too, after high tide brought storm surge into the historic district. The strong wind beached sailboats in Gulfport, as well as this house in Clearwater that got loose from its anchor. Ada closed out our season, but the year wasn't over until one more, and it was a big one. Hurricane Iota, fortunately, the season's only Cat 5. Iota tour through Central America just two weeks after Ada. And as for all those Greek alphabet names, they won't be used anymore. There was Zeta, Ada, Theta. You have these storms in a row. It was difficult. It actually distracted from the actual messaging. So the thought was, you know, let, let's go to a an overflow list of names that are that are more recognizable. During last year's historic hurricane season, planes like the mighty P-3 Orion flew in and out of storms, collecting data to narrow the cone of uncertainty and improve hurricane forecast. This year, Fox 13's Tony Sidiku shows us we could be adding another tool to that arsenal. The Altia 600 is a drone designed for flying into Mother Nature's most ferocious weather. As a test pilot, getting to do any test is exciting. The technology is being called a potential game changer in hurricane forecasting. And NOAA's Aircraft Operations Center in Lakeland is at the heart of the research. 
Commander Adam Abbott-Ball is a test pilot for the study. Right now we're using these drop sondes, which uh, give us a lot of the atmospheric state variables we're looking for, temperature, pressure, humidity, winds. But these drop sondes have limitations. Once they fall and hit the water, they stop gathering data. That's where the Altia 600 drone comes in. Using a similar sensor, it's able to collect continuous data as it flies through a storm. The Altius essentially gives us a movie of all of that data where this may give us a snapshot or a picture. Weighing just 25 pounds, the drone was built to withstand some of the planet's most destructive weather. So the winds won't bother it at 25 pounds? We'll see. Uh, it, it's, it's moving around in the same air mass as those winds. It's going to be subject to those transient up and down drafts just like our aircraft. The math and data suggests that it, it should be survivable, which is great. So uh, the next step is to go prove that. The fully controllable, fully autonomous and fully programmable drone will take to the air this hurricane season and be tested for the first time ever in a storm environment. It'll launch out of the bottom of a P3 plane, unravel into a drone in midair and begin its data gathering mission. These planes don't necessarily fly where it's most dangerous, but that's where you say some of these drones could come in handy and kind of fill that gap? That's right, Tony. So we actually go right in the middle of the storm, somewhere between eight and 12,000 feet. But some of the really important data that we're looking to get is in the hurricane boundary layer, that level that is closest to the ground. That information invaluable to forecasters when a storm threatens. As the technology evolves, it only helps our mission. And our mission, again, is just to help protect life and property. Right now, we know hurricane hunters improve hurricane forecasts by about 30% on average. Researchers here are looking into if these drones can make forecasts even better. At NOAA's Aircraft Operations Center in Lakeland, Tony Sadiku, Fox 13 News. All right, and still to come, it may be the most important thing you need to know as we head into June, and we'll make it easy for you. But first, Jim Weber with some things every homeowner should know. I'm meteorologist Jim Weber with some tips to get your home ready for the storm season. Make sure to trim large tree limbs away from the roof line of your house. And check to make sure your roof and gutters are ready to handle a lot of rain. Clear your gutters of leaves and debris. Remember, it doesn't take a hurricane to cause trouble. A slow moving tropical storm can also dump a lot of rain. So make sure your home is ready. And as we go to break, here's a look at the list of storm names for 2021. A, B, C, D, or E. Do you know which evacuation zone you're in? Meteorologist Dave Osterberg shows us there's an easy way to find out. Okay, here's a question, and I want you to answer it honestly. Do you know your evacuation zone? Are you even in an evacuation zone? Most people don't know, but it is one of the most important things to know as we head into the hurricane season. Good thing is, there's an easy way to find out. Let me walk you through it. Simply head to myfoxhurricane.com, then scroll down to the bottom right hand corner of the page to the county by county. Let's click on Hillsborough, for example. And once you do, you see find evacuation information. Once you go into that, you can see the zones and the colors. Just input your address and you can see what zone you are in. If you aren't in a colored zone, you aren't in an evacuation zone. That doesn't mean you can't get wind damage or flooding. It just means you are safe from the storm surge. Let's say a hurricane is approaching the west coast of Florida and emergency management calls for an evacuation. They would start with zone A, which is the closest to the water. Also, those who live in mobile or manufactured homes, you are also considered in zone A. Depending on the size and strength of the storm, additional zones could be added to that evacuation list. Fortunately, there is information on this site that not only tells you where the evacuation shelters are, but also how to get to them. Copy or print this information out and put it in your hurricane kit. It will no doubt help in your decision making and you don't want to be caught at home with an impending storm surge headed your way. What would be worse is if you were stuck on the road because you got out too late. Also keep in mind if multiple evacuation zones are called and you're not technically in one, let those folks go first before you decide to leave. Paul? Every year, a lot of people ask us the same question when a storm is threatening our coast. Fox 13's Tyler Eliason has the answer and what you need to consider. One of the most common questions we get anytime a storm threatens Tampa Bay is should I stay or should I go? 
If you live in an evacuation zone and you're told to leave, you need to go. It's that simple. But what if you don't live in an evacuation zone? Well, the decision to stay or go becomes a bit more challenging, and the right answer is different for everybody. The general rule of thumb is you should run from the water and hide from the wind. In other words, if flooding is a threat to you, you should leave. But if you're in a well-built structure where flooding is of no concern, you're probably best off just staying put. However, you still need to consider individual circumstances. If you stay, remember that power outages could last for days. Are you equipped to handle that? If so, hunker down and ride out the storm. But maybe you have small children and simply don't want to have to deal with the difficulties that come with no power. In that case, it's probably best to leave town. In the end, it's about doing whatever works best for you and your family. Evacuating does bring its own challenges as well. It'll require packing and preparation, and you have to be prepared for lots of traffic and slow travel on the roads. Make sure everyone, including your pets, have what they need for an extended stay away from home. Don't forget some games, books, and snacks for the kids, as well as medication and copies of any important documents. For a complete list of what you need, whether staying or going, you can visit ready.gov plan. While the decision to stay or go is often different with each individual storm, the time to prepare for both scenarios is before the season gets going. Go ahead and sit down and make a plan with your family today. For Fox 13, I'm meteorologist Tyler Eliason. Still ahead, we'll talk to the director of the National Hurricane Center, and with storms developing earlier each year, see what that could mean for forecasting. And remember this season to take the power of Sky Tower Radar with you on your phone. Our free Fox 13 Sky Tower Radar app allows you to zoom in all the way into your neighborhood. You can also get automatic weather alerts customized for your location, plus lightning detection. You can also watch the latest forecast from our team here at Fox 13 and get hour by hour prediction of the weather where you are. I'm meteorologist Jim Weber with another storm safety tip. If there's an approaching storm, make sure things that could become airborne are either tied down or moved inside. That includes outdoor furniture, your grill, potted plants, even wind chimes. If you can't bring something indoors, tie to something solid using either rope, bungee cords, or chain. If it seems like storms are starting earlier, you're not imagining things. The National Hurricane Center is in fact now issuing tropical weather outlooks starting in mid-May. I spoke with the director of the National Hurricane Center, Ken Graham, about that, as well as the impact of social media. Yeah, six years in a row we've had uh, systems develop before the official start of the, the Atlantic season. So the, the thought was, instead of us issuing special um, outlooks, you know, that's what we had to do in 2020, issue these special outlooks you know, it's a better service to say, you know, let's let's just expect these outlooks to start on May 15th in the, in the Atlantic. We're already doing that at the Pacific. So we're already here um, on duty. So let's just do both of them uh, May 15th. So I think it's a better service long term, long term. It, it's, it's complicated, one, because it's not just the United States. We have these other countries as well that we have to you know, have conversations with about the season. But the earlier the season, the further you get away from the peak of the season. You know, if you think about it, what we're, you know, we have to prepare for is these, you know, these August, September, October, incredibly powerful storms that, that are life threatening. So you get a little further away from that peak season and you also start getting some of the hurricane preparedness mixed in with severe weather season in the U.S. So it's a complicated topic. We have a team. We put together a team. We're going to look at it um, and we're going to get some social science. I, I just don't want to make any decisions that are going to make things worse. So I really want to get. Um, a group of people to look at it. Let's get some social science involved here with the climate science. And uh, the next couple of years, we'll keep having those conversations to see if it's a good thing or not. Um, social media, how has it changed uh, your jobs for the better? And what are some of the negatives of it? Yeah, the positive part is we could reach people better than we've ever been able to reach people. I mean, you think about being able to turn to live video or, you know, and, and remember Hurricane Laura was interesting. We, we talk about that one more time. 17 to 18 foot storm surge and, and no documented storm surge fatalities. We lost more people after the storm because yeah. of generator safety. So social media allows us to really get that information out like we've never been able to do. The tough part is there's a lot of information. So it's so important, you know, when you really look at this from a social media perspective, make sure you go to those official sources. I mean, the information you all are putting out, the information we're putting out, it's never been more important, my, my opinion, the last 27 years doing this and in the weather service, it's never been more important that we're all communicating during the storm because 
if, if we all communicate together with one message, that reduces the confusion, and I tell you, it will save lives. This is really an interesting fact. Think about this. Last year, every single coastal county from Texas all the way up to Maine had at least a tropical storm watch in effect. The one county, the one that did not, was Wakula County in the Big Bend of Florida. Also last year, every single month of the hurricane season, which runs from June 1st through November 30th, had a storm make landfall. That's seven straight months of direct landfalls. Up next, we're looking at products to protect your home. Our consumer reporter walks us through some options from the newest in shutter technology to good old fashioned plywood. I'm meteorologist Jim Weber with some more tips every homeowner should know. Check for leaks around doors and windows. Be sure to get down and look at the bottom of doors. You also want to have a look around pipes entering the house. Make sure there are not any openings that can allow water to get in. And of course, review your insurance plan. Make sure you know what it does and does not cover. You may want to also consider buying flood insurance. When most people look at protecting their home, they think about windows and flying debris. But Fox 13 consumer reporter Subhani Banerjee says there's something else to consider. Well, there it goes. Protecting your home from a hurricane's force means thinking about two key things. Impact, pressures. Andrew Ayers has been selling shutters for 30 years. First thing that you have is you have large missile impact which something hits your window and breaks it. Uh, the, the misconception though is pressure is what we forget about. There's positive pressures which are forward and there's negative pressures which are outward. Negative pressures are actually greater. So you have more of a chance of your window or door being sucked out of an opening more so than blowing it. When deciding between throwing down on hurricane proof windows versus other options, ask this. First of all is affordability. Second of all is how is it going to make my house look? And you kind of have to find a combination of my budget and what's my house going to look like. Roller shutters are at the high end. All you really have to do is push a button. Whether it be remote control, the hardwired switch, you can stop it anywhere you want. It'll close all the way. Simple use. A little more pricey, but super easy to use. Followed by accordion and fabric. Strongest form is an accordion because it'll take the impacts the best. Um, set, and, and this is a real close second. And again, large missile impact. This is also going to keep your window from breaking in most cases. Fabric, your window can still break, but you keep out 93% of the air, 93% of the moisture. Same as an impact window, a lot less money. Fabric gaining popularity for affordability and easy storage. If you can't afford the automated options, fabric seems to be a really popular way to go. Fabric's becoming real hot right now because it's affordable. You can see through it. It's easy to use. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. This is called a male panel mate, which basically has a rubber cap. It's a threaded stud that takes you on a wall. This can actually be painted. Okay, you just hang it. There's grommets. Now on fabric, it's either across the top or down the sides because you want to add pliability to this. This is really going to stop something from going right through? For sure. As for good old plywood, don't forget, lumber prices have spiked in the pandemic. You have air damage and you also have water infiltration. So yes, you can do plywood. Is a, The problem with plywood is where do you store it? It's heavy, you gotta have the right tools. It's hard to reuse it again and again. So the best bet for your budget might be to mix and match. We might do a roll shutter or some enclosures, you know, a little bathroom window, a piece of fabric, average window and according. So we do probably more, most of our jobs have multiple products on them. Keeping costs from going through the roof in a hurricane. Sorbani Banerjee, Fox 13 News. Thanks, Sorbani. You know, pet adoptions went way up during the pandemic. These are photos of some of our Fox 13 family and their new dogs. There are a lot of new pet owners out there, and we don't want to forget about our best friends during hurricane season. There are three key things all pet owners should do. First of all, have a plan for your pet. There are many pet-friendly shelters out there, but not all shelters accept pets. So if you do need a pet-friendly shelter, get there early to make sure you'll get a spot. Second, make sure your pet has an ID. And they should be microchipped because tags can fall off. Also, it's really critical to make sure the microchip information is up to date in case your phone number or your address has changed. Third, make sure you have a current photo of you and your pet just in case you get separated 
and they end up in a shelter. But here is the most important thing the Humane Society wants to stress. Just don't leave them behind, because if it's a category four or five, you're not going to get back to your house for a long time. She saw a lot of sad cases after Hurricane Katrina, so make sure your pet is a part of your family storm plan. Don't forget about our one-stop website for everything related to the tropics. From your phone or your computer, myfoxhurricane.com has all the information and the links you need. That includes daily tropical forecast videos and long-range maps and models to help you understand the science behind our forecast. When things are active, you can get storm track maps as they're released from the National Hurricane Center along with weather watches and warnings. And should a storm threaten us, you can find resources from your county to help you prepare ahead of time. From all of us at Fox 13, thanks for watching Surviving the Storm and stay safe this season.